Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Elise Anderson. In our show this time, we'll cover a forum featuring Ed Case and Cam Cavasso, candidates for the U.S. congressional seat representing District 1 of Hawaii. It was an important event where the candidates faced questions they haven't had to answer yet in other public forums, such as what to do about the Jones Act, state public pension reform, Honolulu's over budget and behind schedule rail, and more. This question and answer event was sponsored by the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii and ThinkTech Hawaii, and was moderated by Kali'i Akina, President and CEO of the Grassroot Institute. The forum was conducted at the Pacific Club at a lunch meeting on September 28th. It was very well attended. Dr. Akina opened the forum by asking the candidates questions about issues facing Hawaii and the nation. Among other things, he asked them about promoting bipartisanship in Congress, the costs of the Jones Act, the Akaka Bill and federal recognition, reducing Hawaii's pension liability, health care reform, reducing the cost of rail, the Tenth Amendment and states' rights, federal marijuana recognition, and North Korea and national security. How do you cut through? Well, first of all, I don't agree that it is simply a matter of what party you're in. I don't agree that it's simply a matter of whether a congressional delegation has Republicans or Democrats or some mix. I think it's about commitment to it and ability to do it inside of Congress. And I'll tell you what I did the first time around, because most of your questions, I'm going to say, well, this is what I did the last time I was there, and this is what I'd be committed to doing again. A, relationships. B, organized efforts to find your friends and work collectively. There is now a Congressional Reformers Caucus inside of Congress made up of Republicans and Democrats who believe that the system is so broken that they're willing to do something that is actually not widely accepted in Washington, which is to put to come together in a reformers caucus and start to advocate. The answer is to keep the economy growing. You know, our, for example, our pension system in Hawaii is, is north of 7% this year because of, of an economy that's doing well. The Controls of that will have to be within the state of Hawaii. They, they do have uh, an out-of-control system of retirement where people, and I think they're addressing that in our legislature and our government now, to, to limit the future growth or distribution of the pension system. But promises made are promises that should be kept, and we can move on from there. So my answer, again, is that from the federal government's perspective, we need to return liberty and competition and an economy and give us all the right to work and make things happen. And that, that is the best answer for our retirement system in Hawaii, to make the economy grow. And we're doing well right now. And I go to Washington to help make that continue to happen. When I was last in Congress, I introduced uh, a reform of the Jones Act. And that reform was to exclude Hawaii and the insular parts of our country from the Jones Act. Remember that the Jones Act requires certain uh, control shipping between U.S. ports. That's great when you're shipping between Atlanta and New York, since if it becomes monopolistic and the cost gets driven up, then you can just switch over to trucks. You can switch over to trains. It's not true here in Hawaii. So Puerto Rico, uh, Alaska, uh, Hawaii, uh, when you apply the Jones Act to those jurisdictions, it creates a virtual monopoly. And I don't like monopolies. I just don't like them. I think that they, that they harm consumers, that they do not uh, result in best business practices. We are susceptible to, to monopolies in a small insular state. I would disagree that Obamacare helped our nation. I would disagree that it brought us stronger. My position is that it, it actually hurt us. It hurt our competition. I would restore us to the, the health care system that we had even before then, the system that allowed our doctors to design their own systems, allowed competition to come in. In my own case, I, um, the insurance costs that I incurred were significantly higher under Obamacare. We were allowed to go out and we found a, a MediShare where you're sharing your, uh, your costs with others and our cost of insurance is half of what it was. That's the kind of system that works where we take care of the, the doctors, the medicine, the, the med medical systems and allow them to create their own systems to compete with each other. The government's role is to protect the competition and make sure that all things are honest and run with integrity. I believe that Hawaii 
is not Hawaii without a strong Native Hawaiian presence. And I believe that that is in both the Native Hawaiian uh, community's interest and in our interest to have a strong Native Hawaiian presence. I've also believed for a long time uh, that Native Hawaiians are better off if they exercise autonomy over a limited scope of their own affairs uh, rather than um, other types of relationships that are out there. Now, you're correct, Kili'i, that uh, the federal recognition bill is not before Congress and probably won't be before Congress and that there is an administrative process in place right now. Uh, and that process awaits the Native Hawaiian community to decide what form of entity it wants to adopt uh, and then go into those negotiations. Now, that's not something that's going to happen at the end of the day. The end result is not going to happen without uh, the federal government weighing in and, and the state government weighing in and the people of Hawaii weighing in because those solutions, uh, those, those details of that relationship are not yet known. Uh, however, uh, my approach from the perspective of a member of Congress would be to step back and let that process um, unfold on its own. Federal government, wherever possible, get out of the business of the state. Let us, at the state level and the individual level, make our own decisions. There are places where it's required. Um, the interstate um, places, uh, the place of the federal government is to defend its people, to, to defend our borders, and uh, to keep us safe from enemies from without and enemies from within. But to the degree that they impose their will on the states, no. I absolutely believe in the, in the word that you said, that competition strengthens us. Competition, iron sharpens iron, and we need to let the different states come up with their own solutions and then compare those solutions between the states and, and, and take that for all of our benefits and grow together as a nation. My views on some issues may adapt over time, and I think at this point uh, states should be allowed uh, to experiment, if I can put it that way, uh, with different formulations of federal mar of, of marijuana laws. So if California and Denver or Colorado and Washington want to go in that direction, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me as to that specific issue. Now, the federal government obviously uh, has an impact on that because uh, marijuana remains a, a highly regulated, highly controlled, and highly prohibited uh, drug, and that creates all kinds of uh, issues in terms of the actual administration of state laws. I believe that states should be able to uh, go in that direction. So from my perspective, from a federal approach, I would not, um, um, I would not um, continue to have it on the Schedule 1. We're looking at, at technology that's generations old and that it's not advantageous to us, but we went ahead as a state to move ahead. And even though states across the nation are experiencing problems, what we've done is, is we've put ourselves into a position that, in my opinion, we cannot reverse. We need to go ahead. It's a mistake, but we need to go ahead and correct the mistake to the best of our ability, which means to help it um, become operational. I've worked with a couple of engineers here recently that, that show that if the private sector can get involved, and it looks like as of today they are getting more involved, that we can find ways to reduce the cost and to make it into a, a much more workable system. One of the options we should look at is uh, is cutting the uh, the rail short um, and not completing the the final phase. So um, it's something we need to look at. And as far as the federal government is concerned, um, our place is, is to help Hawaii finish the job, to work with the Hawaii situation from our federal position, but not to tell them how to do it. My platform, my my candidacy is built on really two planks. First of all. Um, let us try to get our country, our national government working again. Let us try to commit ourselves to what every American wants, whatever side of the issue you're on, which is for our national government to just work again, to just stop yelling and start to talk, uh, number one. Number two, Hawaii, a small state out in the middle of the ocean, four members of Congress, needs a very, very strong delegation. That delegation needs ability, that delegation needs experience, that delegation needs the, the know-how and the commitment uh, to get the job done. I think my, my experience in, in both the private sector where I have you know, risen to the top of two professions, law and executive, indicates that I've done it there. And of course, I've had a long uh, a career in politics. Uh, you can judge me many times uh, by what I've already done. I am who I am, this is who I am. I'm committed to Hawaii, I'm a believer in Hawaii, I'm a believer in my country, and I'm a believer in representing everybody, regardless of what party you're in, where you're from, what you believe. My job is to represent you, and I will. There is a great difference between the two, between Ed, Ed Case and Cam Cavasso. One of the greatest differences is in our, in our approach to taxes. In our last debate, uh, um, Ed Case said that he would have voted against the tax cuts in Washington. 
And I, I go to Washington to secure those ca- tax cuts, make them permanent, and increase them. There's a difference because I go to work with a Republican Congress. To, as a Republican Hawaiian, I go to bring balance to Washington, D.C. The, it cannot do that in Washington. Much as he would like to bring the balance, it's not there. It's not possible. He is forced to be under Pelosi's leadership. There is, there is no other solution. We need balance in Washington, D.C. I go to bring that balance. I bring a fresh voice. I bring a Hawaiian Republican voice to Washington to help us all. I ask you for your vote and to pass the word to others to bring balance back to Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. Dr. Aquina then took questions from the audience and referred them to the candidates for response. There were many questions and the conversation was lively. One of the things that I would encourage is again liberalizing our government controls. Um, I talk to Hawaiians that are losing their homesteads because they're moving on to the next generation. I believe that we have the space in Hawaii to expand our, our ownership, our land ownership, where we should be opening the lands and allowing Hawaiians to build on those, on those places without the tight restrictions they experience right now. I built my own house in Waimanalo. We built it in 100 days. The same day that we broke ground in my house, a Hawaiian homestead broke ground in Waimanalo. Four and a half years later, it's not finished. The First Amendment is critical to our country. Um, you know, there's an old saying, and I can't remember how it goes, but if I can't remember it right, it's now my saying, which goes something like, uh, the First Amendment is a real problem until you don't have it. Uh, and I, I really believe that. Uh, you know, in a big picture, of course, there are certain things that our federal government can, should, and must do to maintain the, a, a strong uh, free press, especially in today's world. For example, I, I thought that, the, that uh, getting rid of net neutrality was a real tragedy from that perspective. Uh, to, to allow a monopolistic trend in the delivery of, of, of those platforms, I think, is very, very dangerous. Various members of the media were there including the Honolulu Star Advertiser and KITV News, and of course, Think Tech Hawaii. The forum was also streamed live on Facebook. If you want to know more about Ed Case, check out his campaign site at edcase.com. If you want to know more about Cam Cavasso, check out his campaign site at cam4congress.com. If you want to know more about the Grassroot Institute, check it out at grassrootinstitute.org.
And now, let's look at our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. You can also see our videos on our ThinkTech smartphone app, available for download on iPhone and Android. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list to get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. We're always looking for new shows. Here are some shows we've recently added to our talk show lineup. Tourism 101, hosted by Mufi Hanneman. It plays monthly on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and covers tourism, a study of events and developments in Hawaii tourism. Pinoy Power Hawaii, hosted by Emmy Ortega Anderson. It plays weekly on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and covers culture, a study of Filipino news, events, and culture. The Will of the People, hosted by Martha Randolph. It plays bi-weekly on Thursdays at 1 p.m. and covers politics, a study of politics and public and political opinion. All great, all worth watching, and of course, all worth learning from. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And now here's this week's Think Tech Commentary. My name is Cynthia Lee Sinclair. I am the host of Finding Respect in the Chaos here on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is live every other Friday at 4 p.m. The show is a safe place for survivors of abuse to come and tell their stories and a place for advocates to come and share important resources. All of my episodes can be found on the YouTube playlist. The latest events in Washington have prompted me to want to come and talk about the effects that these proceedings with Brett Kavanaugh have been having on victims of abuse. Hotlines across the country have had a 200% increase in their call volumes. A groundswell of courageous people are coming forward with their stories. I can understand their concerns. As a survivor myself, I have watched all of the hearings. And I agree with the general consensus that Dr. Ford was very credible. In stark contrast, Kavanaugh, with his arrogant sniveling, acted like every abuser that I have ever worked with right after they've been caught. I found it very hard to watch without feeling ill. It is infuriating to watch these senators cry foul and bang their fists while refusing to allow an FBI investigation. The fact that they did not allow the FBI to investigate immediately speaks volumes about just how far they have compromised their moral compass. Now, finally, with an investigation going, they are limiting the scope so severely that we are at risk to this investigation not being a complete and trustworthy one. They claim that the third accuser is so outrageous that she should not even be interviewed. I think it is important to take a sociological view of her accusations. I worked with teenagers in the 80s. There was a bracelet game being played in high schools all across the country back then. The thin bracelets of different colors were collected. Each color bracelet represented a different sex act accomplished by the wearer. Gang rape was one of the acts on the list. That was the sociological climate in that day. Kavanaugh lied when he was asked what the devil's triangle is. It is clearly noted on his calendar. He said it is a drinking game. It is not. It is a reference to sex with one girl and two guys. You can see him flush with embarrassment when he talked about it. Before he rallied and said it was a drinking game. He was under oath and he lied. And that was not his only lie. 
So now the main point of logic is it does not matter about the he said, she said. It does not matter if you believe her or him. He lied under oath. I am appalled that they are still trying to ram this questionable man through. It is a complete outrage. Falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus. False in one, false in all. At common law, it is a legal principle that a witness who testifies falsely about one matter is not credible to testify about any matter. This is even a common jury instruction. I am very worried that the panel of old white guys won't go through the changes that this country needs to support women's rights and victims of abuse. When I look at history, Kavanaugh is an ultra conservative. He believes in full presidential power and has a history of voting against important women's issues. And this is just with the limited documents we were allowed to see. The Supreme Court is no place for such partisan tendencies. At best, his beliefs are very polarizing. It seems to me there's too much of that in this country already. I do not believe it has a place on the highest court in our land. A Supreme Court judge needs to be completely above reproach. I have hoped from the start of these accusations that the good that could come from this whole proceeding would be to change the narrative about abuse. Well, I am encouraged to see that lots of the country is coming out to support Dr. Ford. They believe her and they respect her courage. Hopefully because of this, the world as we knew it has forever changed, regardless of what happens with Kavanaugh. Now survivors can know they are not alone. They can come forward without fear of condemnation from society. If you have been triggered by any of these proceedings, I want you to reach out to your local services. There is healing in the telling. And I want you to keep telling until you get the help that you need. I'm living proof that there is hope and healing on the other side of abuse. If you would like to come on my show and share your story, or if you are an advocate that has important resources, please email me. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Elise Anderson. We're from Think Tech Hawaii. And we're kicking off our annual CauseVox fundraising campaign. We're calling this year's campaign Think Tech United. Please visit thinktechunited.causevoss.com where you can create your own Think Tech United account and make a donation. You can also use this platform to ask your friends, family members, and colleagues to make donations and raise money for Think Tech. As you know, Think Tech is a good cause doing good work in citizen journalism. In these times, it's more important than ever. And to keep things going, we need your support. Please help us by participating, donating, and spreading the word. Let's keep ThinkTech united.
We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, Cook Foundation, Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric Company, Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, Shreem LLC, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, and Eureka J. Sugiwara. Thanks to you all. Okay, Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech energy diversification, and national and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important Think Tech episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>